that he agreed to come and give us a few minutes. And thanks to the servant that looked after this activity in convincing him and others in the coming weeks. So we have now a hymn. And كل الكرامات العظيمة العلوية استحققت يا غابري الذي بشرت بفرح مريم أم عم نوئيل هي أرفع من الشروبيم وأجل من السرافيم لأنها صارت هيكلا للوحيد من الثالوث هللويا هللويا Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the Lord is so blessed in the face of the Holy Disciples, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit, those sins you forgive are forgiven, those you retain shall be retained, and also our Master, you in grace, to those who live and preach the hood in your church, to forgive sin upon earth, bind and lose every bond of it. we bow our heads before your holy glory. Dispends on us your mess. You've done many sins against you, knowingly and in deeds and words. You, as a lover of mankind that knows weakness, will grant absolution. Shaba, Udaf, Achtan, Afan, Utaf, Daf, Enam, Aliyah, Ufran, Khatayan, Berikna, Rabbu, Khadisna, Halin, Hashaba, Kameen, Amin. Yeah, they saw, Kiri, they saw, Kiri, they saw, Namina, Lero, Yam, Sabatri, Kari, okay. موسیقی من أراد أن يمضي فليمضي بسلام وطبعا يا ريت كلنا نحضر إنه تعرفين إنه بقالنا مدة طويلة بنحلم بإن يبقى في مشروع كبير قوي للكنيسة عشان الأجيال اللي جايين الأحفاد خمسين ستين سنة اللي جايين فالأرض بالنسبة لنا محتاجينها فقلنا إن إحنا نبتدي نشتري قصص شال البيوت دي عملية غريبة خالص كان كل بيت بنشتريه كان يد الله واضحة جدا ما كناش بنشتري بالمصادفات يعني لو احكي لكم كل بيت اشتريناه ازاي كان عمليه غريبه جدا
كل بيت ليه معجزه معجزات غريبه كده بس بحيث ان احنا يعني انتهت دلوقتي بان احنا اشترينا البلوك كله اخر بيتين اشتريناهم في بيت صغير كده عامل زي مثلث لما اشتريناه اصبحت الارض مستطيله and this was needed by the architecture the architecture said that would be great to acquire this house عشان نعمل بروجكت حلو وكان في بيت كده صعب ان احنا نشتريه خالص صاحبه كان يعني حاسس انه ليه ليه ابيع يعني انا جدي كان هنا والكنيسه الارضيه هي اللي هتمشيني حاجه زي كده بس اللي حصل ظروف كده سمحت ان احنا نشتري البيت فاشتريناه امبارح ولا اول امبارح ففجاه بقت المنطقه دي كلها بتاعتنا فصلوا ان ربنا يعني يكمل البروجكت ده على سنين طويله ما احناش مستعجلين بس حاجه لطيفه صحيح حاجه يعني حلوه خالص النهارده كان عندنا اجتماع لل للخدام وقلنا لو يحب حد يشارك يبقى حلو خالص فواحد من الخدام الكبار قال لي انت عمرك ما بتتكلم عن فلوس ايه اللي خلاك تتكلم فلوس النهارده فقلت اخطيت يعني اشوفه ربنا بيبعت الفلوس بطرق لما ربنا بيحب يبعت بيبعت يعني احنا شفنا حاجات كده غريبه قوي في حكايه الفلوس اللي بتيجي دي يعني لو ربنا عايز بيكمل لو عايزنا نسلو داون سلو داون انما لو كان عندك فائض او كده طبعا حلو انك انت تساعد في ان المشروع ده المشروع ده سموه كون ستون مشروع كبير قوي مش عارف حاجه و50 اوضه يبقى في سويمنج بول وفي مش عارف جيم وفي حاجات عجيبه كده يعني طبعا نشكر ربنا الكهن الصغيرين بيشوفوا حاجات احنا ما بنشوفهاش يعني جم في وقتهم يعني يعني كده حكمه وطريقه كلام مقنعه جدا فربنا يكمل المشروع ده ونكون يعني سبب فرحه للكنيسه الموضوع اللي احنا بنعمله ده موضوع الهيلث ده موضوع مهم ليه؟ لانه عندنا ريسورس يعني الكنيسه اللي فيها مواهب جباره في اتجاهات مختلفه وبعدين نفسي بقول دلوقتي للخدام بتوع المجموعه دي نفسي يبقى في سايت الناس تبعت اسئله ومجموعه الدكاتره تحب تجاوب تجاوب يعني مثلا في واحد عنده مشكله مع طفل لسه مولود مثلا عنده مشكله او ظاهره صحيه ممكن يحب يتكلم برايفت او يبعت للويب سايت ده او السايت ده يعني لو في سايت بنعمله بالشكل ده يبقى حلو خالص نشكر ربنا اغلب الدكاتره اللقباط ما بيبصوش انها مهنه يعني ياخدوا منها فلوس وجهه نظرهم انهم بيخدموا ربنا بمنتهى الامانه ومنتهى الاخلاص بنسمع كلام من المرضى عجيب قوي واحد يقول لي تصور الدكتور بيزرار لي القميص تصور الدكتور فتح الباب ومش عارف شال لي الشنطه طبعا دي ميشن يعني الطب ميشن ومش بس طب في مهن كتير قوي الصيادله ليهم يعني اثر كبير قوي في انهم يفهمونا اهميه الدراجز والسبلمنتس والحاجات زي دي فيزيوثيرابيست كلامهم حلو قوي قوي يعني في انهم بيساعدوا في حاجات كتير الدايتيشنز يعني في شك انه مايكل كواحد دايتيشن لما جه اكلم الالدرز هنا كان يوم رائع قعدوا يكتبوا وجم قالوا لي ارجوك تجيبوا مره ثانيه ومش عارف ايه وطبعا يعني كان هاممهم بس انه ما فيش ما بنعملش دعايه على نفسنا مش عايزين حتى يقول هو فين البراكتس بتاعه ربنا يعوض ال ضاعت خمس دقائق خلاص <تصفيق> First of all, I want to thank Abuna Yaoub, Reverend Abuna Yaoub, for inviting me to give this talk and uh, the organization um, from Dr. Wagdi Nada and Dr. Ahmed Makari. Thank you very much. Um, they've asked me to speak a bit in Arabic, so سامحوني لو كلمت العغلط كده ولا I pronounce things uh, incorrectly. So please forgive me for doing that. I'll try my best as best I can. So uh, Abuna very cleverly caught on that one of the biggest مشاكل uh, we have in our century هو إيه is the obesity epidemic. Um, we've heard of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, but actually obesity probably killed more people than COVID did. 
um, and will continue to do so in the, in the 22nd, 23rd century, God willing. So we're going to talk very briefly. I have about 20, يعني, till the hour, for example, we'll talk a little bit about the seven. After that, we'll have a short question and answer. We'll do 20 minutes of a bit of a chat. So we'll talk about how common is obesity problem. Um, how does obesity affect our health? This is very common. A lot of people on Dom Keda show it a few ideas, but we'll get into the more more detailed analysis because very very few people are aware of how much obesity affects our health. It's a big big problem. How do we measure obesity? There are two main ways. There's many many other ways, um, but there's the main two ways. And how does it happen? And five myths of obesity that you might believe. Uh, or may not believe and how to lose weight. I just, in one slide, seven points. And usually it takes me an hour before I actually go through a weight loss consultation, but I'm going to give you guys five minutes free. Um, don't worry, I don't need your Medicare card. I'm not going to charge you today. So don't worry. <laughs> so overall, in the whole world, one in five adults have obesity. One in five. And they're saying it's going to be turned into 30% by the Kedara. 40%. And then eventually, will be, they'll outnumber healthy people or normal weight people. So what you see people now in the normal weight, you're not going to see them. They'll be, a rare, they'll be a rare thing you see. And that's a startling uh, issue as well. Um, uh, and like Dr. Mark Megdi mentioned, by the way, if you've missed his talk, please, please uh, do, do um, watch it. It was an excellent talk. He explained things beautifully about the surgical management of obesity. And he said, very nicely, anyone, any many countries, the poor countries, it's affecting everyone. And that's true even in Australia as well. But speaking of Australia, this is the prevalence of obesity for Australia. So we have the black line on the bottom is the rate of obesity from 1997, I believe in 1995. And you could see it was around how many years 20%. Over the 20 years, it's gone up to about 30%. The middle line is the rate of overweight, and that's been steady at 40%. So altogether, if you take overweight and obesity, we're going up to about 65. So two in three people, or overweight or obese. So this is a big, big, big problem. This is bigger than anything else. Anything else. Not heart disease, not lung disease, not liver disease, obesity is the number one problem of our century, nothing else. I want to go to So, from top to bottom. So, we have a stroke, we have a migraines, um, we have lung problems, sleep apnea, you know, Sleeping, if you, if you notice your husband or your spouse is snoring and they have a weight problem, it's probably, and they're sleeping at night, or irritable, for no reason, maybe just get them checked for sleep apnea as well. Um, we know clots, you can get clots or pulmonary embolism, very common and uh, much more common in obese people. Genital urinary issues, incontinence, our urine infections, this is a, also a big problem, particularly in older women. Musculoskeletal, you know, you get joint pains is a big problem. Um, skin problems, you can find, sometimes people get redness, it's called chronic venous insufficiency. You get this redness, this bloating in the legs or edema, this fluid buildup. Uh, that could be a big issue. In fact, we looked at a lot of people with very severe obesity, they came into hospital for a skin infection. That was one, number one, the number one reason why they actually came into hospital. Um, cardiovascular, arfin bal alb, mugant asar min al min semen kteer taban. Gastrointestinal, uh, Dr. Beheri next week as bole gay hakelim al fatty liver din fil kibid ban. So I'm not going to talk about that today. Cancer, cancer. There's at least 12 cancers. And wa asar tan kteer awi al mukin. So breast cancer, big one. Endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, very commonly. Um, related to obesity, and finally, metabolic cholesterol and, and, and diabetes. So these are very, very important things. So how do we measure obesity is the next thing. So we can use the BMI. So I want you to take, how do we calculate a body mass index? But if you take your weight and divide by your height squared, so you can take your weight, divide 
by height, Maratin, and that's what you get your body mass index. A healthy body mass index is between 18, al tabiyai min 18 to 25. Um, if you're between 25 and 29.9, and only 30, um, then you're overweight, and anything above 30 is considered obese. Okay? With 30 to 34.9, with 35 and 40, by the 40 is more severe obesity. But, uh, the, um, the other way of doing it is waist circumference. You get a tape measure, Kida, and you can measure it. You can measure it um, around just between where the rib is over here and your hip bone. I hope I'm speaking loud enough. And you measure a midpoint, and that's where you put the tape measure. You put a tape measure around. Thank you very much. It's okay. Thank, oh, thank you very much. So you get a tip. So your top rib, the sorry, the bottom of your last rib, and the top of the hip bone. Imagine kada e fi khat in the middle, and you, this is where you point. Okay, and you can get a tape measure. Get your uh, GP or Dr. Laila. You have to look at tape measure. Well, what's my waist circumference? This is more important because some people they're very very skinny everywhere else, but they have a bit of a kirsch coming out here, and that might mean even though andom al BMI tabi'i but they're also obese centrally, and this is important, especially in post-menopausal women, older people as well. Now, why does obesity happen? Well, this is due to an imbalance in energy intake over many, many years. So the highest, does anyone know who are the most obese age group? Is it 25, 35, 45, 55, 65? Who is the most obese pop, uh, age group in all of Australia? Everyone. Hey, blurt out anything. Above 40, okay. Yeah, that's an, it's being a say about specifically 40, 50, 60, 70. What do you think? Put up your hand if you think 40. In your 40s, you get, okay, we have one person. What about 50s? Start from childhood, yes. Yes, it starts from childhood, certainly. That's uh, Dr. Habashi's talk in two weeks. That's, uh, I'll, I'll let her <laughs> do that. That's a difficult uh, challenge, and uh, please tune in for that one. Uh, what about uh, 50s? Anyone? Put up your hand for 50s. Okay, 50s. 60s? 70s? 70s. <laughs> That's a bit of a bias here, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, 80s? Anyone? No, you don't see many overweight or obese 80 year olds, right? There's a reason for that. Actually, the most obese uh, decade of our life is in the 60s. 65 is the peak. And the reason being is that we are designed by God's providence to gain weight slowly over time. If you look at people over in Australia and in, around the world, they gain weight after 20, 30, 40, and then it peaks at 65. And after 65, it starts to eh, come down. And why does that happen? Anyone have any idea why that happens? You lose muscle mass, yes. Sarcopenia, which is a, a loss of muscle mass and, uh, and function and, and frailty, yes. Because we get sick as we get older. So as, by God's divine providence, human beings are designed to gain weight. In the 70s and 80s, we get sick and you need a bit of energy, a bit of extra fat to withstand and being able to eh, um, survive an illness. And even till this morning, another study published, if people are overweight, they actually survive illness. They survive heart attacks better than people who are very skinny. These are for older people. But if you are young, if you are young, this is not healthy. Young people need to be careful because if they're already overweight or obese now, it's going to get worse for them. And they're going to get to a very unhealthy range. But older people are de were designed to become overweight or obese and withstand illness. So it takes many years. It takes decades and decades. All you need is an extra spoon or two at dinner, and you will gain weight over your life. In fact, I went to how much more calories are we eating now compared to 20 years ago? It's a slice of bread extra. That's it. One slice of bread extra is enough to cause a obesity, Because if you extrapolate one slice of bread every day for seven days, four weeks a year, 12 months a, uh, a year, over 10, 20, 30 years, your BMI is in the 40 before you know it. It's very easy to do. Very easy to do. I'm not going to talk about this too much, but it's the energy imbalance, so calories are more than the energy expended. 
عشان بقى ممكن بقى حاجة وراثة جينيريكس ماما بابا يعني تخن شوية you're more likely to get it also if mom and dad are very get very hungry very easily you're more likely to get the same genes you get very hungry easily and you tend to overeat um, behavior as well واحد بكده قدام التلفزيون كتير watching on a TV not very physically active psychological factors we know depression affects a third of people with obesity and also a third of obese people are depressed or have anxiety issues um, social political economic environment socio-demographic factors um, medications في انواع كده حبوب or uh, insulin كمان or the medications that can also put on weight especially anti antidepressants حبوب الحالة النفسية can make you gain weight Um, common medical problems, they must know what the tabana, what the target tabana, or hagakida, so thyroid issues. And finally, uh, hormones, particularly menopause or pregnancy. So, what should I do if I want to lose, if I need, if I want and need to lose some weight? What should I do? That's a big question, isn't it? Here are five myths about, uh, about obesity. Or, uh, I don't know how to say myths, lies, or about obesity. So, number one, It is due to a slow metabolism. Put up your hand if you think your uh, weight problem is a metabolism problem. Your metabolism is slow, therefore I'm putting on weight. Anyone? Oh, I mean, I call it the myth, so you're probably going to say no. <laughs> um, what about, uh, next one is, um, it is purely due to a hormone problem. Hormones are not right. I'm not a doctor, so the hormones are not right. Tell me the problem, please. Lack of exercise is the major contributor. مش بتحرك عشان كده عمل إيه عمل بدخل. Or obesity may may generic. Mama, Baba كانوا كده أخواتي كانوا كده and I'm I'm going to turn out like them. So my parents, family are obese. Or surgery is the only way. So Dr. Mark Magdi, I agree with everything he said except for one. He said Rami, uh, you know, he said one day the surgeons will not be useful anymore. We'll manage everyone with medications. I disagree. I think Dr. Magdi has is going to have a long. very successful career because he's always going to be needed. Surgery will always be needed. But as he said, medications are becoming very effective for weight loss. And we'll talk about that. So these are all wrong, actually, completely wrong. In fact, the metabolism, the fat, actually is very high if you're overweight or obese. You know why? Because you're sweating a lot more when you're overweight or obese. You get warm, you get sweaty, you breathe more. And you're expending a lot of calories just to keep you alive and keep you warm. People who are obese, their metabolism is high. It's actually when you lose weight, your metabolism starts to go down. A skinny person actually has a lower metabolism than an obese person. It's completely opposite. So how much weight should I lose? I get this question all the time. I'm like, look, it depends on your health conditions. I'm sorry if you can't see this. But if you have pre-diabetes, maybe 3% to 5% is enough to put it away. If you have diabetes, 10% to 15% can sometimes reverse diabetes if you're diagnosed very early. So if anyone here is listening and you have diabetes diagnosed recently in the last four, four, um, five or six years, it can be reversed. But it does require 15%. It بقى سليب ابنيا بقى التنفس كده صعب شويه واحد people need a CPAP machine عشان الاكسجين ضعيفه uh, شويه لما بيناموا you need above 10 to you need 15 10 to 15% osteoarthritis joint pain you need more than 10% so كل حاجه عندها بقى ايه it needs a cost if you have a health issue في حاجه بقى عندها ايه السعر بتاعته 10% 5% 15% for me usually I aim for about 15 maybe more because a lot of people come see the doctor when things so they need to lose a lot of weight. This is optimal care. If you can go to a place where there's a physio, or a dietitian, there's a surgeon, an endocrinologist or a physician, a nurse, a psychologist or doctor nafsayan or psychiatrist, this is bad, the optimal thing and this is what I did a lot at the public hospital. Um, But this is very hard to find in Australia outside a public hospital. A lot of centers, but if you are very keen and you want to lose weight, please see the GP, Shufa Dr. Laila. Let him, uh, he or she will refer you on to a psychologist, a physiotherapist, or dietitian if needed. And you need a whole team of people because losing weight, it's, it's a bit difficult. So these are the weight loss. 
So, نقطة نمرة واحد. I just want to be quick. عشان we have some time for questions. Consider medication. Habub and Ibr are very, very. The tablets and injections are very effective for weight loss. I use them all the time. Two, I do like time-restricted eating, okay, or intermittent fasting. So I usually ask people to only eat from, say, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, they they fast or they they should be be sumo. So you fast for 16 hours. Uh, and you only eat for eight hours. If you're an older person, I say try to not eat for 12 hours. So the kubar basbe yisumu tnashe sa, or be il yom yisumu. Physical activity, depending on the ability of the person. If you have bad knees or rokab saba or hakida, I do seated exercises. There's a lot of uh, exercise videos. Maybe Abuna, we might get a physiotherapist to talk about this. But I usually give people like a video for five or ten minutes. They do exercises sitting. But if they're able to stand, they do exercises sitting. another 15 minutes of walking. So you do 15 minutes cardio, 15 minutes um, walking, or some resistance training. The older people, it's better to do some resistance training. Because when you lose weight, and when you lose weight as you're older, you lose muscle. And the sarcopenia, as Dr. Ahmed was saying, is a big problem. So we need to avoid that, especially anyone above 50. If you're above 50 trying to lose weight, please incorporate some muscle building into your weight loss routine. Um, I usually do a VLED, very low energy diet, or LED, low energy diet. And I'm going to talk about that soon. Uh, but basically, it does require to reduce the carbohydrates a little bit. If we have ketosis, we need to reduce our carbs to get into ketosis, which is the medical term for fat burning. It's the medical term for fat burning is ketosis. Water intake, very important. Water will increase your metabolism by 17%. Uh, a lot of people of Egyptian background were never told by their parents to drink water. I don't know why. I think it's a, a cultural thing. Maybe the water used to poison people. It didn't taste nice in Egypt. I remember drinking the tap water in Egypt. It, was, it wasn't tasty. Shai wa ahwa, okay. But water, never. We never drink water. And this is a big problem. Water is very important. Avoid emotional triggers. This is very important. Um, stock healthy snacks and address the psychological or emotional stress. This goes very well with our period of fasting. The whole period of fasting is meant for this. A lot of people eat when they're stressed. Ta'banin, arfanin, za'alanin, bilawe, shokolata, or chips to latba'a. Their snacking starts happening late at night. This is a big, big problem. And finally, I do like people brushing their teeth after dinner. Avoid late night eating and develop a network. Get people to support you. Uh, don't do this alone on, by yourself. Get people to help you. When I find couples lose weight together, they're 90% successful. If you try to lose weight by yourself and the other, your husband or wife or partner are not with you, the chance of success is less than 50%. So this is the program, and it's, it's, uh, you can download this for free. You can watch this. Um, I have this as a meal plan, you, and I have shakes or bars. Because there are all amino acids, and vitamins, and protein, and everything in it. The problem is when people sit there making recipes, they have a lot of time, thinking of recipes, weighing food, and they have a lot of time, and they have a lot You don't have time for this. You can do two shakes or bars, ma'maya, not in, and not in milk. Okay, so it can be siyami if your father of confession says it's okay. Um, you can put in water with shake or bar with salata or fruit. And one meal a day you have to, which is protein or khudar. Bas mafish ruz, mafish aish, makarona, patatis, basilla. You have to cut out all the carbohydrates for the first three months. Okay, so it's a high protein, low carb dinner. In fasting periods, I usually tell my patients to have a lot of cut up tofu or vegetarian based protein, sabanech. Um, Lots and lots of veggies um, with that evening meal. If they're going to try to do this during fasting periods, I do have a vegetarian meal uh, plan. I, I, I provide them. This can be available. You can go online and download this. It gives you a nice little thing. In the UK, or America, or Canada, or Australia, we have different brands. Uh, I don't know about the Middle East. I think they do have, in, in parts of Asia, they do have their own form of meal replacements. These are not protein shakes. These are meal replacements. They have their vitamins and minerals. Protein shakes only have protein. Okay. And I do have one that's in Arabic as well. I had uh, my dietitians got that translated. Um, so if anyone wants a copy, let me know. 
exercise is a big, big myth that people. I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm going to spend hours in the gym. You will never lose a kilo going to the gym, and that's been shown in clinical trials over and over again. The maximum you might lose is maybe one or two kilos, and there's few reasons for that. One, no one had kept doing yoga كتير, بيجوا أكتر. So you get hungrier. Number one. So you, whatever calories you lose, you're going to gain again by eating more. Two. When you lose weight by exercise, your metabolism, as you lose weight, you lose metab metabolic rate. Um, and number three, um, well, there's actually, there's actually at least six or seven theories. But I always recommend it, Ashen, it's going to be good for your health. You'll sleep better. You'll be relaxed. You'll be in a good mood. Your joints, your muscles. Uh, your heart health, the cholesterol, the dehn, the sugar, the dust, your blood pressure, your whole body improves, but your weight will never improve with exercise. So you still have to do it, but not for the reason we think. My recommendation is do anything, do it regularly, not seriously. I don't like people exercising one day a week. Ah, I went to the gym for an hour, then I went to the gym. Okay, the rest of the week I went for the other six days. I would rather you do half an hour every day rather than one or two hours one day a week. That's better for your metabolic control. Most of the, the sports physicians at the, the conferences I go to, they just say me. They say to the doctors, "Tell your patients just do anything, <laughs> just do anything." So I usually give them YouTube videos to uh, to do for 10-15 minutes, plus a walk or some weights. That's it. To eat when you eat a Big Mac, that's how much exercise is going to take to burn off. So you can see here, you can go. Um, it might take you several hours of sitting to burn a Big Mac. Or if you're running, it might take you uh, 45 minutes, um, or very high-intensity interval training for 77 minutes. So that tells you that food makes a much bigger uh, contribu contribution to our calorie caloric intake. So don't think that exercise is going to burn off all that. في حاجة تانية مش عارفة ترجمة بالإنجليزي بالعربي بس you can out eat what you run. يعني ما فيش كمية الرياضة ممكن بقى يحرق كل الأكل هتاكله. Otherwise أنت بقى هتكون بايت في الجيم على طول 24 ساعة. So what are the obesity medications? There's tablets and there are injections. These are the tablets I use: Contrave, Juramine, or Topiramate. And I'll talk to you about those in a moment. في أنواع حبوب هنا مكتوب هنا. And I'll talk to you about Juramine. Juramine بيشتغل على الغدة النخامية والحاجة اسمها hypothalamus. وفي الجسم بيرفع هرمونات اسمها نور ادرينالين وبيشبع it reduces your appetite and reduces food intake and you lose weight and some people here may have tried germine I don't know it's an old drug still works very well and and when you compare it to placebo you lose about on average nine to ten kilograms of body weight over the over six month period the side effects are usually nausea خليك واحد كده شبعان كتير إنسامنيا بيأثر في النوم dry mouth إمساك or constipation and anxiety so if you're an anxious person this is not the best drug for you واحد كنت تعبان وزعلان probably don't avoid this drug Contrave is the next one that works on the brain also مشتغل على المخ it works on a nerve called POMC pro opio melanocortin neuron and the act of the the action of this drug is it increases Uh, the activity of this nerve, uh, of, uh, of this neuron, and it makes you reduces your hunger. Emotional eating. If you have an emotional eating, you eat when you're stressed. You eat because you crave sweet or salty things. This drug works really well. Okay, especially if people have cravings because it works on that emotional triggers. And when you compare, um, when you uh, compare it to, uh, or when you combine it with a very intensive behavioral therapy, yani haraka or counseling, kaza, you can lose about 11.9 percent body weight. The side effects very similar. Zay zay germline is up to nausea, maybe vomiting, sad bidi soda, sad bidi msek, constipation and headaches, and binashaf al or dry mouth. Now, I'm more excited about the injections because they don't affect your sleep, or your mental state. The injections are very, very powerful. This is an injection you inject every single day. And these are called GLP-1 receptor analogs. Glucagon-like peptide-1 receptor analogs, GLP-1. Fi Ozembic, I think about Ozembic. Dr. Megdi spoke about that last week. Um, and it's a once-a-week injection, very popular in the news, and then that's approved only for diabetes. 
but a lot of people, as you have you heard, are using it for weight loss. And finally, uh, Munjaro. Munjaro is approved for diabetes in Australia, but it's exact identical drug, same dose, has been given a different name, and now it's approved for obesity in the United States, and it's called Zepbound. It's exactly the same drug, same dose, but they've just changed the name for legal purposes. It's called Zepbound. And that's, um, so you might hear Munjaro, Zepbound, hey, hoa hoa, okay? بس واحد السكر وواحد ال ال approved for ال 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 الوزن. منجارو وزب باوند بيشتغلوا مش بس على GLP1 and I'll talk about GLP1 بس بيشتغلوا في مكان تاني في المخ وفي المعدة عشان and you get more weight loss بيشتغل أكتر يعني it's more powerful. So how do GLP1 analogs work? They work to lower blood sugars. So when واحد كده بيأكل when you eat food, the small intestine. المعدة بيعمل GLP-1 حاجة طبيعية، so هرمونات حاجة طبيعية في معدتنا already، okay GLP-1 دي حاجة طبيعية في جسمنا already. وال GLP-1 بيقول البنكرياس اعمل لي insulin، so your insulin tells the pancreas makes insulin and the sugars come down and بي بي بيوقف الجلوكوجون and that makes your sugars go low. so it's very good for diabetes. and we have already a few different kinds of GLP-1 and uh, like I mentioned Ozempic and there's a few other ones. but it also works on the brain. بيشتغل المخ. So it makes you feel full. You get full quickly. So I tell people you will get hungry, but you get full very quickly. It also reduces hunger, and also because it slows down emptying of the stomach. You feel like you feel full. It's sitting in the stomach quite heavily, and sometimes, um, like Dr. Megdi mentioned, if you're having surgery and you're on these drugs, it might sit in the stomach for a bit longer. Um, so people say, do they increase my metabolism? No, they don't. But they make you eat less. Tab doctor, I don't eat much. I said that's true. But as you lose weight, as you eat less, what's going to happen? You're going to get hungry. You can get hungry and hungry, and this drug will block that. Okay. So even people who don't eat much, this will help. Sexenda leads to about 10% weight loss. Problem with Sixenda, it's very effective, very, uh, but it is costly, about $375 for uh, in, in a month, and you have to give it every single day. It's a small needle injection in the tummy, for the kul yom. What about Ozembic? Um, there's various doses. Ozembic leads to, in people with diabetes, so all the clinical trials, kul shufna al-Ozembic, for best for the nasal andom sukkar. So they lose about six and a half kilos on average. But in non-diabetic people, and non-diabetic people, it's more like double or even triple this way. That's why it's very popular. It's one injection a week, and it's more effective than Sixenda, and it's cheaper. It's about a third of the price. Or now it's more like half the price. It's gone up a little bit. And um, there are videos on how to inject it. Say, Ebra, you put the needle on, and then you inject it once a week. Now, the side effects, Sixenda, Ozembek, Hoa Hoa. It's the same one, so nausea, Bloating, mukin bidi hamuda shwaya or reflux, mukin imsek, mukin ishel, so constipation or diarrhea. Okay, but most people, the same film, they get a nausea, hasin kedem shazin yaklu, or they get very sick. Or at mukin na wakal tahagat ila, yani masan shwaet kak, shwaet haga matli, shwaet krima, yah haga keda, you you feel like you might vomit. So anything heavy or oil or fried, creamy, ayo, fatty, anything might make might make it worse. So we counsel patients to avoid this. Now, Munjaro is the strongest. Munjaro ba e Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz, okay, or the Aston Martin if you if you know your cars. Or Munjaro is the strongest. Also, hey Bartu, it's also a weekly injection. Hey Ebra Mara Filizbo, come in. Now it works as a Ozempic and Sexenda. من ناحية the GLP-1, but part ناحية تانية بيشتغل على GIP, glucose insulinotropic polypeptide one. So GI or peptide, GIP. So بيشتغل من ناحية تانية come in. And you can see here, there's a summary of how they work. They work on the brain, they work on the stomach, they reduce food intake, they increase um, uh, uh, nausea. But these work uh, a little bit differently. You get less nausea with this one, and more people like it, and it turns off hunger in the brain a lot more powerfully than Ozambi. So a lot of people like this. Now the problem is about Munjaro and Agalia Kaman. It's about 320 to 360 a month. I do something a little bit different. I can make it a little bit more affordable for patients, but 
in general, that's the price. So we're hoping the Australian government يخفف ال ال السعر المedications because at the moment فيش حاجة ما تغطي تحت Medicare. Nothing's covered in the Medicare uh, in this country for weight loss. And the weight loss you get with Munjaro is 20 to 22 percent. So if you're 100 kilos, you might get down to 78. That's huge. That's almost like what Dr. Megdi is doing. But what the difference with Dr. Megdi is that he can get that weight down, and for the most part, they, they keep it off. I mean, unless you have the sleeve gastrectomy, you might regain a bit of the weight. Um, you have to be on these drugs, to be honest with you, on and off for the rest of your life. On and off. And you can get six months on, three, four months off, six months on, three, four months off. That's what I do with my patients long term who are on these drugs for long. So I tell patients, if you're going to go on this, so you might be on, on and off for many, many years. Until after 65. Then after 65, your <laughs> might go down. So, as in summary, obesity is a disease and treatment is available. It's like anything else, any other comorbidity. Medications are available and are very effective now, especially the new generation um, medications. Dietary changes are very important. I put everybody on a low calorie diet with shakes or bars and lots of uh, low sugar fruit, very, um, a lot of lean protein. So in non-fasting periods, it's fish, egg, lean chicken, lean meat. Or in the fatar, and, and then in fasting periods, um, we talk about different options as well. Uh, physical activity is good for overall health, but not for weight loss. So I encourage everyone to do something every day. Do something small, but every day. Consider some form of intermittent fasting. So I say to people, easiest thing is only eat for eight hours a day. And this is kind of, to be honest with you, similar to what we do in the fasting period anyway, if you think about it. So the health benefits and the spiritual benefits are there in the period of fasting. Behavioral therapy can, uh, changes can help, so emotional eating we talked about. And see your doctor regularly. The number one predictor in the people who see their doctor regularly are the most successful people in losing weight. That's the number one predictor. It wasn't your gender, it wasn't your age, it wasn't uh, your ethnic background. But the people who see their doctor regularly are the most successful predictor. It has the most successful prediction and who actually loses weight and keeps it off. Because it provides that layer of accountability. So very similar to spiritual lives, you're seeing your father of confession regularly, you're more likely to be more successful in, uh, in, your, in your spiritual life. So I hope this um, is a message there. Set realistic targets. Some people say, I want to lose 40, 50 kilos. Go do surgery. I can maybe get 15, 20%. All right. But if you want to lose more than that, I say, okay, maybe we try 20%, 15, 20%. And if you want more, then maybe surgery is the option. But if you say to me, a doctor has just 10, 15 okay, lifestyle medic and medications will definitely get you there, no problem. But just be, make sure you set those expectations realistically. Work towards maintenance once the target is achieved. Now, one person, يعني بيت جديد. When you build a new house, you need to maintain it. You need to maintain it. So, no point in doing all this and say, okay, خلاص بطلت الرياضة, بطلت الأكل, رجعت تاني. You went back to your old ways. You need to, whatever you're doing now, you'll probably continue for the rest of your life. If you're fasting, if you're exercising, your water intake, you're doing a low calorie diet and avoiding a lot of high calorie foods, high carbohydrate foods, you'll continue this for the rest of your life. Except maybe you have a cheat meal once a week or a period of Eid. Interestingly, Abuna put our ad right under, above the, uh, the Easter cookies ad at St. Mark's uh, newsletter. So right underneath that, Abuna, I don't know if that was, if that was your invention or not. And many people can lose 10 to 20% of their body weight and keep this off, but maintenance is very key. I want to thank uh, everyone. I want to thank our, the fathers of the church and the doctors, who, um, Dr. Ahmed and Dr. Neda. I'm happy to take questions. What about the uh, Ozembic or Monjaro and the thyroid cancer? Uh, a common question, so Ozembic and Munjaro theoretically can increase the rate of medullary thyroid cancer. Do you know about saratan, talodda? Very, very specific. Medullary thyroid cancer makes up 0.1% of all thyroid cancer. The commonest ones are papillary and follicular and herthal cell. Medullary is very, very, very uncommon. It's rare. 
Um, of the 150 patients I have with thyroid cancer, only one of them has medullary, uh, and they're cured, thankfully. But so if you have medullary thyroid cancer and you're very unlucky, uh, very unfortunate, you cannot go on these drugs. But if you have any kind of other thyroid cancer, it's okay. It has no effect. Um, but we tell patients, if you have a mom or dad or brother and sister with medullary thyroid cancer, be careful, maybe just get the thyroid check. But it should not be an issue. Most of the studies on this were found in rodents, in, in mice and rats, where they, because their thyroid is different to ours. So they're more responsive, they get more of these cancers more than ours. Um, it's just a physio physiological difference. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Rami, for this wonderful uh, lecture. Um, to I, I always actually ask Maggie, my wife, that you know when when, when you, ha you have enough um, weight that would help you for the future. So I think you confirmed this. I always had discussion, and I said, look. Few more kilos would be all right. I'm getting into my 60s, mm -hmm. so it's really a good thing to know. Uh, but what I what I see in, so from my patients, the postmenopausal women, uh, it's a bit hard sometimes for them to lose weight, and 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 no matter what they do, they all sort of uh, problem. Um, do you give them any different advice from men? Like, do you have any sort of uh, or they just have to follow the same? Because some of them would have tried med, uh, medicines and it didn't work. So if you just can comment on that, it would be good. So it's a very good question by Dr. Ned in the postmenopausal situation. So the main, um, my approach is very similar to anyone who, even without menopause. But I do stress resistance training more because women in postmenopausal, they lose bone mass and they lose muscle mass as well. Plus their fat distribution changes. It becomes more central, as you know, Dr. So I do push a bit more resistance training along with the traditional aerobic training as well. But I also offer a lot more uh, compassion to them because I say, look, it's not your fault. It's just, it is what it is. Your body's probably gone through pregnancy. It's gone through menopause. This is not your fault. And they're kind of relieved to hear that as well. So we kind of have to approach it non-judgmentally and tell them, look, on average, women have a much harder time losing weight. Men have more muscle mass. We're more metabolically active. So harat al is higher. We have a higher metabolism uh, than women. So uh, maybe my mother-in-law, Dr. Sana, is probably the few women who can stay very, very lean in her 60s. But most women are not like her, I have to say. <laughs> most women struggle uh, with weight loss. How about the younger ones with the PCOS? It, it, that's also a very good question. We don't know. The PCOS story, so Takesa Mabayad, polycystic ovarian syndrome. A lot of young women, this is biggest, uh, another big epidemic. We know that women with PCOS, they gain on average three, four kilos a year, uh, as opposed to the average Australian woman, which gains about 0.8 kilos a year. Now, is it the PCOS causing it, or is it because they're gaining weight that they're getting PCOS? We don't know. But we know women with PCOS have higher insulin levels, and they have more depression. A third of them have depression. And a third of them are affected by acne, um, hair issues, um, and, uh, and, uh, and that can maybe affect them mentally as well. So there's probably a reason for that, and that's the insulin, the hyperinsulinemia. Most women with PCOS will have very high insulin levels, and that's potentially contributing to their weight gain and their hunger as well. But we know that if they lose 15% of their body weight, often PCOS can go, a, can go in remission. You can get rid of it, and that's what I usually push, push for. You still first choice would be metformin, or do you just give other drugs as well? I look, uh, if I have an obese young lady with PCOS, I don't give metformin. I give them this, I put them on the seven step model. I push hard for weight loss because metformin is a bandage. It's going to bring your insulin levels down. It might correct the metabolic problem, but what's the underlying issue? It's usually the weight. So metformin does help, but I find this is much more powerful. One question, a follow up. Um, metformin would be okay if they go pregnant, but do you have any problem if this medication they run, they are? pregnant? Yeah, they, if they're pregnant, they have to stop everything, of course. Yeah. But wouldn't affect early pregnancy if they are on it until they know they are pregnant? Oh, no. I've, there's been case reports about women giving birth um, if they're on Ozempic. Even there's been case reports of women giving birth when they've been on Ozempic the entire pregnancy. I would not advise this. You should stop it as soon as you find out. But if you find out you're pregnant and you're on these drugs to try to lose weight and have a healthy pregnancy, usually they, there's no uh, issues with the fetus at all. 
The exception is, um, one of them is topiramate, which is one of the drugs I didn't talk about too much. That's category X. So that means that's very, that can cause uh, teratogenic issues. It can cause an abnormal fetus. So that definitely, if you're contemplating pregnancy, do not go on to pyramate at all. The other drugs, once you find out that you're pregnant, stop them. Um, I think fentermine or duramine is category B3. It's got a softer category for some women, but in general, we stop them anyway. Yeah. The talk. In regard to the medications, why, in your opinion, if people lose weight and achieve their ideal BMI, if they stop the medication and like follow a healthy lifestyle, what's the reason they would gain the weight? So look, I want to just say I believe in, in, in lifestyle, even without medication. I mean, I lost 40 or 50 kilos without lifestyle. I've regained 10. People say I look healthier. But, you know, I, I believe it works. But I, you always get hungry. And unless you have a lot of self-control and willpower, and don't forget, as we get older, we're more likely to get hungrier and hungrier as we get older up until our 60s and 70s. So in general, everyone, or I'd say 99% of people, will regain weight when they stop the medication. But how much weight are you going to regain? Are you going to regain a few kilos, or are you going to regain 15, 20, 20 kilos? And that's where the lifestyle is important. So if people want to try coming off the drug after they've lost weight, I tell them, look, you're going to regain a few kilos. If you get, regain more than two or three kilos, ta'ala, come back. We'll start the tab medication or the tablet again. But if you can maintain um, uh, the, the weight um, long term, that's great. But I always don't leave them and discharge them completely. I say either speak to your GP or speak to your physician and have an action plan so that if you regain a little bit of weight, Try to get on top of it early. Don't leave it for too long. And this will be the case, to be honest with you, ever, forever. Thank you. Thank you very much for this excellent session. And um, it complements the session made by Dr. Mark Magdi last week. Uh, I would like to ask questions regarding Ozambique again. Um, the government, they spend a lot of money regarding the management of obesity, which is a complex problem globally, and the programs which nothing working. Why are they, they, um, they looking at the medications working like Ozempic? Uh, they discouraging doctors not to prescribe for obesity in spite of its more complex problem mm -hmm. than diabetes, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and also the access to it and concern from the patient from what they hear in the media about the safety of uh, Ozempic, long term. Um, that's, I think that's three questions in one. I'll try to address them. So the problem, the government has looked at funding models. So they discovered there is a different kind of Ozempic that's 2.4 milligram or semaglutide 2.4 milligram. That's called Wigovi. You may have heard of it. Yeah. That's approved in the U.S. and available in the U.S. and it's going to probably come to Australia. So I was actually part of those discussions. I sat with the meetings and they tried to say, if we fund Wagovi on Medicare, it will cost us $6 billion and Medicare will go bankrupt completely. They say, we will not sustain, our Medicare system will crash. So let's keep Medicare alive, even though it's an imperfect system, and charge people. Now, what they're trying to really discourage is people using it off-label because one, people with diabetes, poorly controlled diabetes, we know is life-threatening. It can be life-threatening. Uh, but also the misuse. So a lot of people who are not... So we want to be very careful. We're saying obesity, not weight loss. They're different things. Obesity is very different to weight loss. Like we mentioned, obesity has diseases attached to it. Weight loss may not. You might have a few extra kilos you want to lose because you're going to the wedding, you're going overseas, you can go to um, get married. That's very, very different to obesity. Obesity is a, is a condition. So as a physician, I use Ozambic off-label, meaning not for diabetes. But they're very sick people. They have a lot of health issues. Meshach Aktira, high blood pressure, cholesterol, etc. cetera. Um, and Dr. Ahmed, you mentioned um, a, a, another... Long the long term. So the Ozambic uh, story, there's been now close to 12 trials with Ozambic. Um, multi thousands of patients, multiple continents. We have six years worth of data showing there's been no increased risk of cancer. 
It does reduce risk of stroke by 26%. Um, it does reduce high blood pressure, cholesterol. There are a few people who are predisposed to gastric paresis or a, a lazy gut, and that's some people, not everyone. And there's been case reports of people dying on this, though to be honest, there, most of the people who died with Ozempic were misusing the drug or buying a compounded version of the drug. I discourage that, don't get a compounded version of the drug. Um, or using it with other medications as well. But there are some people who are predisposed to this because we know it slows down the gut. Um, but there's been no increased risk of cancer, like pancreatic cancer is another one that's often brought up. That's usually seen in, in mice and rodents. So I think it's overall, to be honest, pretty safe. Um, and I, I have about four or 500 people on it at the moment. So I use it quite widely, yeah, and I'm getting very good results. The, one of the, the Ozempic is available in USA in a tablet form, semaglutide. Does the tablet work in the same way regarding weight loss, like the injection, or they are different? Um, so, uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed is talking about uh, Ozembic semaglutide in oral form. There's two kinds. There's uh, low dose, which is available already in the United States, called Rebelsus. Rebelsus causes about three to five kilograms weight gain. So, the manufacturer, the pharmaceutical company Novo Nordisk, that Dr. Megdi alluded to last week, decided let's Let's quadruple, let's triple the dose, see what happens. So they made a 50 milligram tablet. And, and the OASIS trial, it's called the OASIS trial, found out it had huge weight loss, 16 to 17% weight loss. So that's undergoing further clinical trials at the moment. So they're trying to evaluate the, effort, the safety of this. And I'm hopeful we'll have an oral uh, form of this available, because that's going to be, I think, going to be a game changer, game changer completely. Uh, I, I have one more question. All the problem with obesity, uh, I believe it stems with the type of food we're eating this uh, day. So what, uh, what changes you give to your patients regarding uh, having a healthy diet to prevent obesity in the future? So I, I look at what our an ancestors did in the 1970s. Very few people were obese. Why? One, because they never snacked. Two, everything was natural. Tabikh, mostly homemade. There was no snacking. Um, they might have eaten late at night, but that might have been a whole meal. And they were very active as well. Basically, uh, then they didn't eat emotionally. When people were sad or depressed or anxious, they spoke to each other. They used to go to church and pray or go to confession. They had their friends and family. Now, when especially during COVID, we saw a lot of this, as I'm sure you have, people eat emotionally. They have high pressures at work. They have marital problems. They resort to food, because food immediately gives us satisfaction and happy hormones like dopamine and serotonin. Uh, and that's a very easy fix to some of our problems, but you know, this thing called hedonic eating, you know, you're eating to make you feel better, is a big, big problem. It's a huge problem. 70, uh, 30, 40 years ago, we did not have this problem because the food didn't taste this nice. You know, if you want to really break the body, you might have one, you know, one spoon of asal, you know, honey. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Now you have different kinds of chocolates, ice creams, balawi. It's just so much stuff now. And we, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So, you know, uh, they didn't have this issue. You know, uh, my, my dad tells me a time in the Sa'id, God bless his soul. He was born in the 1940s. You know, he might have a piece of lahma with a bit of, uh, you know, and maybe a bit of a dessert once a week. For the most part, it was basically yats and fool and tamaya. That's all they ate. It was, their food was very simple, very basic, and there was no obesity back then. So we've certainly gone the wrong way with the food industry. So I try to people to go back to old, old, old times. You know, keep your food fresh. If your grandmother does not recognize what you're eating, don't eat it. <laughs> Um, uh, we really appreciate your attendance tonight, and uh, thank you very much for uh, the, the talk tonight. We, it was uh, uh, touching a lot of important points, and for a lot of people hesitant about education. Uh, I just want to remind that next week uh, we will have Dr. Um, Jason Bahari, and uh, he will talk in the same topic, which is in obesity, and we're going a little bit deeper in the gastrointestinal tract. And the week after, Dr. Habashi, 
Habashi will talk about obesity in kids, and I'm sure also we'll have a lot of questions for her regarding how can manage the kids and uh, have healthy choices regarding mom to give to their kids and uh, prevent this complex global problem which uh, every country in the world, poor or rich, they are suffering from and it's uh, across all ages from childhood till 65. <laughs> احنا دلوقتي هن هنروح القاعة في شوية فواكه كده كلها هيلسي عايز اسألكم سؤال لو if you can find say 50 talks each talk takes say 30 minutes motivational يعني I'm thinking, the dreaming of, we have something like 20 people in Sydney that are having very convincing power. Some of them are priests. بفكر كده إن لو أطلب من كل واحد فيهم يعمل نص ساعة ونحطها على memory stick كده ويبقى معروف إنك مش هتسمع غير اليوم يعني يوم واحد في الشهر هتسمع أول طوق. وهيبقى في براير في واحدة بعتت إنها she lost 65 kilos she is American black lady and she said that I pray before I eat three times every day pray that the Lord will help me يسد نفسي أنا عارف أروز ويت بفكر الحكاية دي لو في الفاسيلتي دي موجودة رأيكوا فيها إيه؟ فإذن أجبنا عشرين واحد that are very clever in convincing people because it narrows down to self-control self-control is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit طب ما نجيب متكلمين حلوين يكلمونا كل يوم يعني يوم ثلاثة في الشهر تسمع ثلاث طوق واحد هيكلمك يقول لك وممكن تسمع الشهيد ده أكتر من مرة في اليوم قبل ما تاكل رامي قول لي حاجة زي كده تنفع بدل الأوزيمبيك I'm really feeling that this يعني you'll be out of job anyway but طيب اتفضل نصلي اسم الآب والابن الروح يكون صلاح أمين نشكرك يا رب على ترتيبك لينا وعملك لينا اجعلنا يا رب نخدمك بأمانة وإخلاص اجعل يا رب الكنيسة تكون مقبولة ومحبوبة لكل الشعب لأنها بتقدم لهم حاجة ساعدنا يا رب إن احنا نخدمك بإخلاص وبأمانة وقبلنا ليك كبنين ندعوك بشكر أبانا الذي في السماء امضوا بسلام سلام الرب يكون مع جميعكم حتى لو أنت مستعجل فوت على القاعة خد حاجة وامشي تبقى عشان اللي تعبوا وجابوا الفلوس دول ما يجيلهمش احباط يعني انا جاي معاك طبعا